In this video we're going to be looking at negative feedback specifically related to op amps but remember that negative feedback is applied in a lot of physical systems from mechanical to chemical to uh, hydraulic and so forth but remember just with op amps. To begin with we're going to be looking at our op amp uh, from a open loop perspective. So here's our op amp, we've got an input and an output. Now I'm only having one input here um, and that we could simply think of that as the difference between the two uh, normal inputs. Uh, and so I'm going to use the name here gain with the letter A open loop. And by open loop I mean that there is no connection from the output back to the input. All right, so open loop is a straight through circuit, just a gain. Triangle is just a gain. All right, what we know so far with our op amp is that the AOL in the ideal sense was infinite, and in the practical or non ideal sense, it was still very large. Okay, 10 to the 5. Let's say for a particular op amp, you might pick up. The problems with this configuration are multiple. All right, and let's summarize that. So, problems with open loop. One, the gain is huge. All right, it is not uncommon that you want to build a circuit that only has a gain of three, five, ten times. All right, not 10 to the 5. So, with 10 to the 5, that's a little bit hard to work with. All right, so the gain is huge. And an open loop circuit. However, the biggest problem is the gain is not constant. So if you were to, for example, change the temperature that the device was operating in, change the input voltage, so the difference between our two normal inputs, okay, change frequency of the input applied to it, pick up a different op amp, okay, it could be exactly the same one from exactly the same manufacturer, it's just the second one that happens to pop out of the little uh, piece of styrofoam, okay, so pick up a different op amp, all of these factors may, or most likely will, result in a different AOL. Okay, they can have a large effect. So even between identical devices, even on the same PCB, you're going to get different gains, which makes this particularly uh, not very useful for um, circuits where you actually want to be able to avoid things like distortion or be able to measure some sort of small signal accurately if the voltage input changes, which you expect it to. Okay, whether that be audio or even the output of a sensor, um, all of a sudden the gain changes. Um, and that relationship between gain and these parameters here is very nonlinear. So open loop op amp for amplification generally not useful. There may be a particular instance with a particular unusual circuit where, okay, maybe it is, but generally it is not useful. So what can we do to solve this? What we can do is we can introduce negative feedback. And in essence, negative feedback is simply taking some of the output signal and subtracting it from the input signal. So here's our input, here's our output. Okay, we still have AOL inside there, but we have, and I'll just put a little box in here, a fraction of the output whether it's voltage or current, in this case it's voltage, but it doesn't always have to be. Output voltage is taken and subtracted from the 
from the input. All right, so what we're doing is we're taking the output of our amplifier and we're using that to actually subtract from our input. So it seems a little bit unusual um, because normally we want to amplify, we don't want to bring some sort of uh, fraction of it back. So just remember it's a fraction, it doesn't have to be the whole thing, it can be a fraction. But what happens is that the output fraction opposes the input or the original signal. And perhaps not intuitively, but we actually get a lot of benefits from this configuration. So, benefits. All right, we get increased linearity. By linearity, I mean that the gain, okay, in a non-ideal sense, if this was, for example, frequency versus gain, a non-ideal amplifier, if it looks something like that, and we see there's a curve in here, while in an amplifier, okay, we might see something like, in fact, sorry, not frequency, let's do that with respect to input voltage, okay, we actually want a nice linear or straight line relationship between input voltage and gain, um, rather than a, a curve or something that looks something like that. So we can set up the circuit to have a linear response, so increase linearity, so that no matter what our input signal is, so for example a sine wave, all right, that the same amplification will be applied no matter what the input voltage is, so we won't get any distortion in our signal. So increase linearity, really good for amplifying time varying signals, things that are going to vary a lot over time, but all amplifiers, you want them to be linear. All right, we also get, as an advantage of the uh, closed loop, okay, and I should have mentioned that, sorry, this is now closed loop because we have a loop coming back again in a closed form with negative feedback. We get increased bandwidth. So whereas our original amplifier with respect to frequency versus gain might have looked something like that in the open loop. Okay, we sacrifice the amount of gain we get but we get, still at some point we'll come down again, and closed loop, we'll get lower gain, but much higher um, frequency that we can amplify through to. So we can increase the bandwidth, um, and we can desensitize the gain to component differences. All right, so even small differences between our op amp um, so even changes between this value, and they can be quite large changes, 10,000 in gain, are actually going to have a very small change in the actual total gain of our circuit. So even a change of 10,000 here, which would be huge in the original open loop configuration, will have a very small impact in our closed loop form. So negative feedback has a number of really useful features here. Okay, increased linearity, increased bandwidth, and desensitized gain to component differences. And of course we get a more usable value of gain, depending on your application. A lot of my circuits are quite low gain. However, we do get some disadvantages. So, no free lunches. So disadvantages, we reduce the gain considerably. I'm not talking about going from 10 to the 5 to 9 to the 5, I'm talking about going from 10 to the 5 to 10 to the 2. All right, so multiple orders of magnitude that we are reducing it by. And we'll see that, for example, if this was a log plot. Quite a large change between the open loop gain and the closed loop. But it's worth it to get these function, these features here, especially that linearity one. All right. If we're trying to make an amplifier, we want it to have a linear response. So even if it's not as high gain as our previous um, open loop one, the fact that it's linear makes it useful. 
by having it as a non-linear one or very non-linear over a large operating range it's not useful therefore we couldn't do anything with it anyway and we also have the possibility um, for instability so if not designed correctly all right this value here uh, it is possible that you can actually end up with a circuit which oscillates even if you put a DC value in here you can end up with some sort of oscillation coming out of this so be careful because there is the possibility for instability but all in all from open loop where we have temperature input voltages okay this is the one that causes where that non-linear effect comes in but all of these have non-linear change in frequency or even choosing a different op amp gives us a different value of AOL by adding negative feedback we can end up with a circuit which has basically now a usable uh, amplifier Got good bandwidth it's nice and linear okay we can design it with multiple uh, and expect we have op amps with multiple um, open loop gains which are going to vary as they all do with manufacturing tolerances and still provide nearly the same um, uh, closed loop gain and I like to think normally we get a more useful value of gain here so it's up to you whether reducing the gains disadvantage or advantage I think it's normally we classify as a disadvantage um, but then also watching for this potential for instability so the last thing I want to show you then is the analysis of a closed loop or negative feedback amplifier so if we take the same circuit that I had before we take a fraction of our output okay so this this beta here you know it could be 0.7 or it could be 0.1 whatever it happens to be and we subtract that from our original input here so in this configuration the output voltage so voltage out voltage in V out is equal to the open loop gain times the input voltage okay remembering that all I'm talking about here is perhaps the difference between the two of our normal uh, op amp inputs right, it doesn't have to be the fact that there's only one terminal it's not a different type of op amp we're just saying it could be the difference treating it as a scalar rather than two values minus because we've applied negative feedback the beta value or B if you prefer times the output voltage All right and that makes sense so voltage here is the input voltage times that gain subtracted by the output voltage times by the fraction of that output voltage so B times that output voltage and we can rearrange that so we can get V out as being just one uh, occurring just once in this equation as 1 plus uh, B O L equals V in A O L and thus we can create an expression for the closed loop gain okay or amplifier with negative feedback associated with it equals like we normally do output over input which in this case will be equal to AOL over 1 plus B AOL so we see the open loop gain appears on both the numerator and the denominator but it's divided by 1 plus the fraction associated with it and if AOL is very very big okay so much much greater than one then we can use the approximation ACL is equal to 1 over beta or 1 over B all right but that is the true uh, expression for closed loop gain